Phil, welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. I got an Instant Pot. That's right, 2013 called. They want their Instant Pot back, but they can't have it because I bought it. I really like it. I've never had a pressure cooker before, but Prime Day got me. The deals. The lightning. And here it is. We once featured an Instant Pot on the show before with our friend Kevin. Today on the show we're gonna make mushroom and wild rice soup. Here's a picture of it. It is so freaking hot outside that uh, the thought of eating soup is a little bit silly, but it's cold inside because I use air conditioning in my house. Today we will start this recipe with me fixing myself a drink. Now let me teach you this incredible recipe that I have right here. This is a glass of iced tea that the ice is melted into and I didn't finish drinking. But if I put booze in it, it'll become a cocktail. <laughs> An incredible recipe. Let me just ice that down a little bit more. And I'm going to take whatever's left in this bottle and just pour it in. Really, it was not that much booze. So it's going to be weak bourbon and weak tea. I call this one weak. All right, so the Instant Pot has many functions. One of them is saute. We will begin by pressing saute and then start. Okay, so that's gonna heat up the pot and we can use it like a saute pan. Go ahead and glug some olive oil into there. You could also use ghee or really anything to be honest. And like most tasty things, we'll start with a whole one onion. A whole onion. This is a yellow onion. It is not a Vidalia onion, it is not a sweet onion. It is a yellow onion. Lately, at the Lucky's Market, there's a new cashier who doesn't know any of the codes of produce. And she keeps ringing my shit up wrong. When she rang up the garlic wrong, I was like, is that garlic really $5 for a head of garlic? And she was like, yes. She didn't just be like, no, I don't know. She said, yes. And I was like, no. <laughs> no, it's not. Who the f is paying $5 a head of garlic? Not me. Hell no. Okay, so I'm, I'm chopping this onion. It is a, a whole one. And uh, the recipe that I'm loosely following, and by loosely I mean as good as I can follow, it looks like it's got a lot of vegetables in it. But vegetables, like many things in life, shrink when you cook them. So don't worry about that here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my onions in there and uh, one thing that I'll immediately comment on is that when you are using the saute feature of an instant pot you're not gonna be able to you know do a true saute you know flip it around as much and it's a somewhat narrow uh, area that you're working with so as I saute subsequent things you know we're gonna get fairly crowded in here and that's okay you know we're gonna cook everything long enough that it doesn't really matter the idea is just to get a little bit of color on some of your vegetables these onions are really bothering my eyes and if it's not perfectly sauteed well we're going to cook the ever-loving hell out of them so you know it'll be fine okay in addition to that, that onion, I've got some homegrown garlic. So I've got like seven or eight small cloves, probably the equivalent of four or five larger cloves. And uh, again, this is not cured, so you can see this very juicy, and it's very difficult to peel, which is okay. I think it's worth it. Don't mind my struggle. I'll, uh, I'll just be here smashing this garlic for, you know, another minute or two. I'm almost done. Okay, I've got my garlic. That's not actually, that's not how I say garlic normally. I usually say garlic, but sometimes I feel the need to enunciate things, so garlic? Just give it a rough job. The big honking garlic is good in this context. Again, you're gonna cook the hell out of it. Yeah, just throw it in there, it's fine, fine. It's good, it's fine. And we'll give it a stir. Woo! Hot honey. Okay, I've got around one pound of mushrooms. And contrary to the opinion of the cashier, these are not portobellas, they are creminis. They're just really big creminis. Hey, you can chop these however you like. I would say just give them a big, big rough chop. I saw in an episode of Kenji's whatever the f he's like, you could break mushrooms down like this. Okay. <laughs> And then was like, if you got a child, you know, it's a good thing that a child can help with. But uh, it, I don't, it didn't work that well this time. So there's that. Okay, here's my big, big boomer shrewers. Again, it looks like a lot. And it, it, you know, genuinely it is a lot. But we're gonna go ahead and throw those in there. And mushrooms shrink more than anything else when you cook them. That's because they're like 
99% water or uh, some other percentage that is more accurate than that. Okay, the pot is full, no problem. But, you know, our goal will be to start the cooking, maybe get a little saute on them. You know, if they don't cook down, that's fine, that's fine. All right, at this point, we know this will taste good because the combination of garlic, onions, and mushroom is delicious. It's almost like we're making stroganoff, but you know, no, no beef. No beef today. All right. Now, uh, while that's working, we can work on yet more vegetables. Someone might be so bold as to call this a healthy dinner. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what healthy is. All right, we're going to cook. We're gonna use a lot of celery today, boys and girls, and everybody else. Lots of celery. So here I am chopping up the celery according to my own way of doing it, which of course is the right way for me. And we will give it one of these. I am uh, assuming that because we will be pressure cooking this for a while, the texture of the celery should break down pretty pretty nicely. So more celery than we've ever used before. And make sure to keep stirring your pot. You can see already that the volume has reduced significantly. There is in fact room in this pot. Very exciting stuff. All right, and we will put it in a bowl and we will work on carrots. So this recipe does feature the mirepoix of carrots, onions, celery, but we cook them at slightly different times. So I am not gonna bother peeling these carrots. I don't think it's gonna matter today, but I will go ahead and dice them up into bite-sized pieces. It's my favorite size pieces when eating, which I think is gonna be a dumb recurring joke that I make on the show from now on. So I will be here chopping carrots for a few minutes. We're gonna go for roughly an equal amount of carrots, which should uh, cook down nicely and give this soup lots of good flavor and breadth and nutrition, which are three good things about food.com. Be back soon. All right, check it out, check it out. Our mushrooms, garlic, and onions have shrank considerably. And so now we will add one cup of wild rice. So this is wild rice. It's a mix of various, it's a custom blend of wild and whole grain rice. This is from Lundberg. Kind of looks like bird seed. You can see there's brown rice and some probably like wheat berries and shit in there. Go ahead and pop it in. And similar to how you might do with uh, risotto or other such things, you just kind of want to toss it for a brief saute, which will uh, help with the texture of this soup. So now we're gonna deglaze with some white wine. This is a, a Chardonnay that's been sitting in my fridge for a long time, which is perfect for what we're doing today. We'll pour in the rest of that bottle, and we will scrape the bottom of the pot to get off the fond, not the frond, which I sometimes call it. Alrighty, so now we can add the rest of our vegetables. You could probably even put more vegetables in there if you want. I just got tired of chopping, imagine that. And now we need to prepare some veggie broth. So, I have BTB, veggie, veggie BTB. A heaping scoop of the vegetable shits. Waiting for my water, to, my water to get hotter. Wait for the water to get hotter. Wait for the water to get hotter. It's not working, so I'm impatient and I'm just gonna do one of these. Doesn't that look great? Of course it does. It is a little important to try to mix things up a bit when you're using a pressure cooker uh, because the food does not move around a whole lot in there while cooking. Contrary to like a rolling boil, because of the pressure, it just won't, it won't move around as much. But maybe, uh, I think that's close enough. There is definitely going to be a big chunk of that, <laughs> but I'm not too worried about it. At this point, we can also increase the temperature to high. Not that it really matters, but you can see I was able to get that paste to dissolve a little bit. So that was four cups of broth, and I kind of think that might be not quite enough. I just kind of want, um, I just want a little bit more liquid. So maybe like four and a half. And then finally, we will add some thyme. Thyme will be our spice tonight. You can use fresh thyme if you want, but... There's some dried thyme. A couple of bay leaves. I forgot that I had these, fresh ones, which are nice. Three small bay leaves. And we will hit it with salt and pepper. You gotta be very mindful of the amount of salt you put in, depending on the kind of veggie stock you use. The BTB is not super salty, which is one of the reasons why I, I like it. But go ahead and give everything a big mix. You wanna make sure that your vegetables are all covered by the water. You can see that it looks very, very thick right now, but as these cook down, they will release liquid, which will thin out the soup a bit. A bit, a bit. And I think that's it for ingredients, unless I forgot something, but it's too late now. At this point, take the lid and put it on. 
It makes a funny sound because it's a appliance. Go ahead and hit pressure cook. Well, I actually uh, hit cancel and then hit pressure cook. And we are gonna cook this for 24 minutes on high. So the the, uh, the way a pressure cooker works is it builds up pressure. And this is, this is gonna be a bullshit explanation, so I'm sorry in advance because I don't actually know how they work. But I'm pretty sure that it builds the atmospheric pressure within, not atmosphere, the, the pressure within the vessel. And at different pressures, uh, water boils at different temperatures. And so you can like simulate cooking process of doing something low and slow more quickly. I don't know, that's a bad explanation. But essentially the pressure inside this is gonna get way high. And as a result, you know, it, it will cook differently than if we just boiled it. I will say this is the longest thing I've cooked in a pressure cooker. I'm excited for that. And in addition to the actual cook time, there's also a release cycle where it's coming back down to normalized pressure. So it keeps cooking through that as well. You will see on here that it is preheating. So it is currently heating up and building pressure within the pressure cooker, but it's not it's not gonna take as long as if we just did it from cold because we have been continually heating up the pot so it's already a little bit warm. So that 24 minutes does not include the time that it takes to get up to temperature. While we are waiting, I will have another beverage. And that's it, we probably won't even show you that. So we'll be back soon. All right, we've made our way through the 24 minute cook time, at which time it kicks over to keep warm and it begins a process that the Instant Pot calls natural release. That's a funny term, and I'll, that's all I have to say about that. During natural release, the pressure starts to go down. There is also a venting button, which is the quick release, also a funny term. After we went through 10 minutes of natural release, we will vent this shit, and it goes Kind of cool. They uh, they made these things in such a way that you can't open them if it's not safe to open. So you can see here, I'm trying to open it. It's too much pressure. But as it releases the rest of the pressure, we'll be able to open it. In the meantime, get you some spinach. This is spinach, and you want a lot of it. I'm going to use the bag, and it's not you know 100% quality spinach, right? It's been hanging out for a minute, but that's fine. That's fine. And give it a chop. I think it's fun to. You got a big honking thing like that. I think it's fun to chop things like that. And you don't get to usually chop things like this. Just give it a chop, just like that. This might be too much spinach, but I don't care. Spinach also shrinks when you cook it. Nope, not ready yet. I think I was supposed to put a little turmeric in there, but it's only for color. So, fuck it. we're not gonna do it. All right. Okay, so this thing popped down. That's that, uh, that what you do it. Which means we can open it. And inside, we have soup. Big, thick soup. It is pretty thick. Uh, yeah, okay. We're gonna put in all this spinach. <laughs> and, uh, because it's hot, you know, it'll, it'll cook the spinach a little bit. We may need to add some more liquid. Maybe. But maybe not, you know. Maybe not, maybe not. But I, I already, you know, it smells really, really good. And smell is a critical component of flavor, kids. So if it smells good, it probably tastes good too. And look at that, look at that. You see that? All that spinach we put in there, it's like it disappeared. It was never there. Not this time, we got you. And finally, we will add in some Borden sour cream. Borden is the wife or girlfriend of Elmer from Elmer's Glue. It's a fun little fact there. And we'll just put in a ladle of sour cream. This will give it some creamy. This, that's the point of it. And I really don't think we need that turmeric, so f it. Also, that's one way of saying that this is my recipe and not just a rip off of the one I was referencing. And that's it, boom. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Oh my gosh. All right, we will ladle it up into a soup bowl. Oh man, that looks good. It's pretty thick, it is pretty thick. And there is our mushroom and wild rice soup. All right, let's taste this soup. Mmm, very good. As expected, it very much tastes kind of like the stroganoff flavor palette, but the vegetables make it really good. That's really yummy. That's really yummy. Tastes wholesome. Well, I think that was a success. Probably feel pretty, pretty good. I think it needs a little bit more salt, personally, but yeah, you probably feel pretty good after eating that. So, there's our soup. Have a good night. We'll see you next time on PGC.
That's how you do it. Ba-ba-ba!